Hello, this is Mrs. Ross, and this is Lesson 100, Practice Set and Starred Problems. Okay, so it says each square root below is between two consecutive, meaning one right after another, whole numbers. Um, so let's see, I know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2, and the square root of 1 is equal to 1, um, let's see, I know the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So 7 is between the square root of 4 and square root of 9. So it's going to be between 2 and 3. And that's my answer here. 70, let's see, so if I take uh, 8 squared is 64. Um, oops, 9 squared is 81, so 70 is between 8 and 9, square root of 70, and then the square root of 700, hmm, so I know that the, let's see, if I take 20 squared, I get 400, 30 squared, I'm going to get 900, um, so somewhere in there, let's see, 21 squared is going to be... 41, let's do 25 squared, 25, I get 625, that's getting close, what's 26 squared, oops, 676, even closer, oh, 27 squared, 729. So it's going to be between 26 and 27 here. You can see this is kind of a trial and error process we've got going for this. Um, the other part of lesson 100 is um, it looks to me like it's more of the uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem. Sorry, I lost it there for a minute. So I know that this is going to be C, and this is A, and this is B. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared. 2. 1 plus 1, which is 2. C squared is equal to 2. So we square root both sides and c is equal, and we're just going to leave this as the square root of 2. Okay, this is actually um, what we call a special right triangle, um, but you'll learn that in geometry. So, um, and then on this side, so this is c, we'll make this a and we'll make this b. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Uh, 2 squared is equal to 1 squared plus y squared. 4 equals 1 plus y squared. So we're going to get rid of the 1. So I have 3 is equal to y squared, square root, square root. y is equal to the square root of 3. And I'm leaving it that way because the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 are both irrational numbers. So um, it's just easier to leave them that way unless you're told to, to do something different. Okay. Draw a number line and show the approximate location of the points representing these real numbers. Are any of them irrational? So pi is irrational. Um, this one is not irrational. Square root of 3, let's see, what is the square root of 3? Oh yeah, that's going to be irrational as well. So that's 1.732 and it goes on forever. And then negative 1 third. Uh, which is not irrational. So the irrational ones I'm going to go ahead and circle. And then I'm going to put them on the number line here. So 0.33, that's going to be, oops. So 0 0.333. And then I have 1.72, so my square root of 3 goes there. Uh, pi is going to go right there. And negative 1 third going to go there. All right, 
Uh, number two, the face of the spinner is divided into fifths. What is the probability the spinner will not stop on a prime number? Okay, so let's see. I know three is prime, five is prime, and seven is prime. So I want the probability of not prime, of which there are two, out of five. So that's my answer to A. B, if the spinner is spun twice, what is the probability that it will stop on a prime number both times? Um, so probability of prime is three-fifths, and then if you're going to do it twice, that's the probability. Okay, using the distributive property, we know that three times x plus three equals that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the x. So I have x to the one times x to the one plus x to the one times three. Uh, here I'm going to add my exponents, so I get x squared plus three x. That's my answer. All right, Nathan used the data in the graph below to mold a scale model of a car from clay. The car is four feet tall, and he used the graph to find that the model should be two inches tall. Uh, the length of the car's bumper is five feet. Use the graph to find the proper length of the model's bumper. So if it's five feet, which is here, then I kind of take this across here. It hits right there. This is going to come down, so it looks like two and a half inches. What is the scale factor from the car to the model? Write the scale factor as a fraction. So let's see, we have um, model car, uh, real life. So if the model is two inches tall, and in real life it's four feet, feet, which is 48 inches tall, then we have 1 to 24 is my scale. Nathan completed the model. It was 7 inches long. Estimate the length of the car. So 7 inches. So here's 5 inches. Here's 6. Let's say this is 7. Okay, we're, we're doing what's called extrapolation. We kind of know how the, the line goes. I'm going to say 12 feet. Okay. Uh, the edge of one cube measures 2 centimeters. The edge of a larger cube measures 6 centimeters. What is the scale factor? from the smaller to the larger. Um, so it's going to be 2 to 6, but you're going to divide by 2, which makes it 1 to 3. The area of each face of the cube is how many times the area of the smaller cubed? Okay, so if I take one face of the smaller cube, face, uh, the area is 2 times 2, which is 4. And if I take the large cube, face, area 6 times 6, which is 36. So the larger cube is 9 times the area of each face, 9 times larger than smaller. And I do that by dividing 36 by 4 to get 9. Um, so that's B. Let me change colors here. The volume of the larger cube is how many times the volume? So let's do C over here. Volume of the smaller cube is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Volume of the larger cube, 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216. So if I divide 216 by 8, I get 27. So the volume of the larger cube 
is 27 times larger than small cube. All right. Uh, each square root is between two consecutive whole numbers, and we're trying to find that. So let's see. Uh, 40. Let's see. I know that 8 squared is 64. Uh, 7 squared is 49. 6 squared is 36. So 40 is between these two. So it's going to be between 6 and 7. Let's see. Um, 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. So it's going to be between 4 and 5. Because 20 is between that and 40 is between that. All right, Pythagorean theorem. Here we go. So this is B and this is C. And we're trying to find A. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C is 17. So 17 squared is equal to A squared plus 15 squared. 17 squared is 289. 15 squared is 225. So we have to get rid of the 225 before we do the square root. I'm trying to get A by itself. And then I square root both sides. I get A is equal to 8. All right, volume of each solid. So we know that the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. Here, the area of the base is 1 half base times height, which is going to be uh, 1 half 4 times 3, which is 1 half of 12, which is 6. Um, so I'm going to plug this in here, and then this is the height for the volume. So I end up with V is equal to 6 times 6, which is 36. Okay. Over here, same thing. Volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. Area of the base is equal to pi r squared because it's a circle. Uh, here I have the diameter is 4, so my radius is going to be 2. Uh, 3.14 times 2 squared. 3.14 times 4, which is 12.56. This is going to go up here, and then this is going to be our height. So we have 12.56 times 10, which gives us 125.6. Um, so let's go ahead and we need to simplify this before we do anything else. So I'm going to just hold on to this here. Anything to the 0 is 1. So this is plus 1 is equal to, this is 4 times 4 times 4. So that's uh, 64. So now we can do our two-step process. First step is we're going to get rid of the 1. This comes down. That goes away. This comes down, 63. And then we're going to popcorn this. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Don't forget your negative sign. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. That goes away. That goes away. x is equal to 63 times negative 2 over 1 times 9. 63 times 2 is negative 126 divided by 9. I get negative 14. Um, here we're going to cross multiply. So I have 45w is equal to 3.3 .3 times 15, which is 3.3 .3 times 15. I get 49.5 over 45, over 45, W equals, I get 1.1. Okay, we'll do 30 in part two.